Welcome, everyone. Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to the January 12th edition of the Plumpton Board of Selectmen meeting. Um, welcome, and Happy New Year for those that we haven't said so before. So same ground rules as usual. I think everyone in the room uh, quite used to them and probably no need to recite tonight. Um, we will have just a few moments of silence for reflection or preparation in any way that one wants to. So again, good evening. Um, and uh, we again welcome the people from uh, the Halifax Carver uh, shared uh, cable uh, studio. And we appreciate them being here and filming this for broadcast. Uh, so I guess we jump in. Um, uh, first agenda item is the annual report. Uh, uh, Kristen sent out a memo, and we have to get to work on the Board of Selectmen report. Uh, last year, uh, John and Joe tried to convince me that the new kid on the Board of Selectmen was required to write the thing. Um, I sort of bought that, but somehow along the way, I was able to convince Dale that he should do it, So, and he did a great job last year. So we have two choices, because um, Colleen, when she wrote the annual report for Community Preservation Committee did this amazing job. So, um, why do I get a sense this is three <laughs> against <Yeah>. one? <laughs> um, yes, because I wasn't on the board for part of last yeah. year, so it doesn't make sense for me to write the report. Okay. So, do we think That's we'd like to ask Dale to uh, <laughs> write a first draft and then have us uh, take a look at it? We'll do. Would that be all right? Yeah, no problem at all. And why, if if you have whatever you'd like to, the three of you individually or collectively would like to include, just email me so I, you know, okay. if there's any spots you want to put in there. And so, there's actually is there a February deadline on that? Do you remember? Yeah. Hmm. And you have the, you have the email with the details. There's a lot of details about proper t yeah, typeset and yeah. character yeah. size. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you, Dale. Um, all right. So the next item is the uh, West and Cross Street uh, traffic issues. Um, um, uh, have you all had a chance to take a look at the report we received last week? So I have spoken to the police chief. Um, I've spoken to uh, Jim Mulcahy with Highway. Um, and um, um, I think we came to a general consensus on, on at least a suggestion to deal with that. Um, the, the report re received seemed to imply that there wasn't uh, much speeding going on on the street. And the general consensus was changing the speed limit would have some problems associated with it. But um, the proposal or, or the suggestion is the following, that a stop sign be put um, at the end of Cross Street. There would be a, um, a, a sign before it that said stop sign ahead, um, warning. And then um, two signs, one on, on either side, on, on West Street, on either side of Cross Street, which would either be an advisory slow sign or one of those um, curved, um, uh, curve ahead signs uh, to warn people of the, um, of the uh, somewhat, um, uh, or to be careful as they came to that intersection. So the goal there would be to clean up a little the confusion on who has to stop where uh, without disrupting traffic majorly. Um, everybody seemed on board with that. I took a look over there again today, and I, I think that would improve the situation considerably. Sounds good to me. Good. Right, so I make a motion that we uh, proceed that uh, that way, and we uh, ask Mr. Mulcahy to move forward uh, with those actions. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Done with that. So next is uh, public safety buildings. Um, uh, I believe uh, you asked for that, John, to be on the agenda? Pro probably. I, I just uh, wanted you to let you guys know that we're starting the process to at least make an attempt at getting something prepared for town meeting. I, Dale and I and the police chief met today. We 
going to meet again, but bring in the fire chief and um, go from there. Um, I think that we owe it to the townspeople to at least um, bring them something. Um, we may, after doing this for a month, we may say it's, it's not doable. I don't, I don't know, but um, we do have a lot of ideas on how cheaply it can be done if, if we do things like space metal buildings and, and stuff like that. You know, not not a Cadillac, but a Chevrolet. Um, one of the things that uh, one of the major reasons why we need to at least attempt to do this is because right now we can get 2.8 percent long-term bonding. How much? 2.8. And, and the, the, the more historical norm is three and a half to four, which makes a considerable difference. So uh, moving now while interest rates are low, uh, especially if we, we pursue using the report um, that was uh, that the committee generated, which is excellent to give us some ideas as to how it, how it works, um, we, can, uh, we can actually put together some real cost savings there, doing it a little bit differently rather than having it uh, you know, built from scratch. There are uh, canned products out there that would work fine for us. Uh, we, we, I mean, put the, put on the table, and we think we probably can do it for half of that yeah. if, it's, if it's done with uh, prefab buildings and pre-engineered buildings. So it's built someplace else. We don't have to worry about uh, prevailing wage and all that type of stuff. And um, you, you had the bond company run some numbers uh, so I have them run the 20 year numbers. I'm going to have them run the 25. But on a 20 year number, um, using what, 8 million or 7, seven million? 7 million. Using 7 million, the, uh, the payback, um, uh, the payback at 2.8% is um, 549,000 annually. So basically cut that number in half if you could half the cost, which I believe we probably can come close to that and still have perfectly adequate buildings for 25 years. Um, you, would, you would have you know, half of that, say $275,000 a year, and all of that money is accrued in the capital account every year by, uh, by our own bylaws, which means that it would not even hit the tax rate. It would be, uh, we, we would solve the infrastructure problem without anybody raising their taxes. So, I have two questions. Um, forgive me. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to step down on this because I'm going to butter to one of the properties that's being considered for this. I think for the moment I shouldn't. Well, we're not going to no, discuss that. We're not, we're not. I actually started looking at. Well, that was my question. <laughs> I started looking at the other piece of property and, and it. Well, I know, and that's all the more reason I, I think. No, I no, need, no, just yeah. relax. It's not going to be. It's not. Um, I, John, I want to step down. I can speak as a private citizen from down below. Okay. So where is this thing? I'm, I'm looking at the piece of property that uh, um, a lot of folks think is viable for um, something like this. And these two pieces, where this is, this is at the corner of Main Street in Winnetuxet. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is this is town-owned so land. Peanut property. Peanut property. Um, this is part of her property, um, as is this. Mm -hmm. So you, you pick up that, which is, which is again, these weapons and things could be wrong, could be up, which is not enough. But beside of that is a piece that is owned by a person that has bought up, a, over the years, bought up a lot of tax property. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, I'm pretty sure that that piece, and it's, it, uh, goes on to this too. So it's bigger than, than it's just here. Mm -hmm. It includes, you know, this here. With if you put that parcel with it, I think you'd end up with a knife. So it's, it, it can be looked at. Um, so we're hoping for a donation or we're going to be purchasing we, we would probably have to purchase it. Okay. And what about the engineering study that was going to be done for this site? It's in the process right now. Um, we'll have that. I'll have that probably within a couple of weeks or 10 days or so, he promised me. And, and, and this site becomes very viable, and there are options, depending on how you want to do it, where we may be able to actually accomplish what we need to accomplish for the town for the next 25 years. 
the fields would stay. They wouldn't go. One of the things that the study didn't do is use the basement. Oh. And so your footprint will be quite a little bit smaller uh, because a lot of the police related stuff can be in the basement. Mm -hmm. Cells and things like that mm -hmm. can be in the basement. So. Okay. Um, so that takes care of that question. Where's the point? <clears throat> sort of thinking of this property or possibly that property. Well, I did dig back into the one I talked to about um, swapping. Mm -hmm. And there's a wetlands issue, but there again, in looking through the thing, there's a, there's a parcel, a parcel that I don't know how the people ended up with it. It's, you know, when we were looking down Main Street and we were trying to figure out what that lot was, mm -hmm. well, it's assessed for $12,000, and it's just somebody that's had it forever. I, I don't know if they even pay taxes on it. I'm going to check. Uh, and this is check. basically across from the cafe? Yeah. How big was that, John? It wasn't a very big piece. Eight it's, a, it's an acre and a half. Acre but, and a half. But it, it fit, you know how the, the wetland is there? Mm -hmm. Now you've got more along the highway that's not wet. So that, yeah. that may be viable too. Um, but with, with all of this said, I, I, I think that we could end up spending some money. So I, I mean, I'm going to propose that we sell some lots in the town and you use that funds to, to buy uh, this other land if we can mm -hmm. make it work. So. Okay, then my other, I don't know if it's a question or a comment. But this, this is the sort of thing that I was hoping for when we talked about working meetings before. Because, you know, I was reading the mail today and I could sort of hear you. It's like, this is really interesting. I, I want to hear this. I want to be there. And is that something we can do? You can, you can do it, but you're going to have to post a meeting. Mm -hmm. and, and which is fine. That's okay. So that would be the kind of meeting that we do during the day so that the police chief and the fire chief could participate. And, um, yeah. I, I would like to do that. And okay. as long as it's not on a Tuesday, I can do it. Okay. We can do that. That was way. the charge of the building committee when they handed the study over to you. They said, Mr. the Board of Selectmen, now you cite it and uh, and bring it forward, bring the bring the project forward. Mm -hmm. And and after you, we are it. set for tomorrow, so you, you, you it's all set. Sit out, so you can sit out and listen like you did today. But, but from now on, we'll make them... Uh, you know, post meetings. meetings. Tomorrow, tomorrow, what we need to do is go back through what we were given by those consultants and make sure that everything that's in there is needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so both chiefs have got to look and say, you know, I can do without this. Or yeah, this whatever. Is. So that so that we really get an idea as to what we really need to do. Okay. Oh, we had some people out there. Um, I was just wondering, and you may have you did just address it, but what the uh, group did before when they did the study, it was pretty comprehensive, and they did meet with both the chiefs and all that, and wouldn't they have sort of looked into doing a sort of a half as good building um, if they could have? I mean, wouldn't they have tried to do this the least expensive way? And yeah, well, they didn't like, for whatever reason. I mean, they... They had uh, expensive construction. What we're, we're going to find out, we're going to contact Morton Buildings and people like that and see if they've ever done something like this before. And basically, you have modular buildings, right. so you, you cost get cut in half without Aesthetics prevailing wage. Would come into it a little bit. Pardon me? Aesthetics would come into it a little bit, wouldn't it, if it's going to be in the center of town and be here forever, I mean, like that part of this building's been here for how many years? I mean, no, I mean you can you can cover that with clapboards or, or whatever is appropriate. It just wouldn't be brick. Okay. Yeah. And then sometimes they do a simple brick facade on the outside of metal buildings, which which works out fine too. And and you can't really tell from looking at it that it's not. Um, but when you consider the possibility of uh, the like the mobile unit that we bought that's in the parking lot now, that's a thousand forty five square feet. Three of those would. Uh, custom built and laid out, but three of those would make a perfect police station. So, as long as we don't have to look at them. Pardon me? As long as we don't have to look at Well, what you would do, you're going to have to. What you would do in that case is you buy three units and they would be put on a common foundation together and then you truss roof it so it would have a regular peak roof and it could be, I mean, the exterior could be anything you wanted because you'd be ordering it. But it would be relatively 
much less expensive than ordering a stick built, you know, uh, an on site stick built, built building. And, and, and not that I'm dissing the people who did this study, but they're generally in the business of, they're in the business of architectural design and so on. So the last place they ever go is to a prefab building. They don't want to do that because they don't make any money if they do that. We're, we're chasing down a couple of towns that have done this. The only question that I have, I have an uncle that <clears throat> built most of the Yale buildings and built most of the buildings in Hartford, Connecticut. And when they built those buildings, they built them. They built them 50 years ago. And they're still standing. So when you build a city building or a state building, okay, a lot of your buildings today look nice. They're basically. They're built like garbage. They put a lot of nice things around them and over them. So I mean, if you're going to build a building, I mean, you either build it the right way or you don't build it at all. Because you want to build it, especially if it's a city or state or municipal building or a college building. You build those things to look nice, but you also build them to last. Now, I mean, a good example is like, for instance, over here you have wood moldings. And a lot of your modern office buildings, what do they have? They have rubber moldings. I mean, so that's what, if, that, if that's a perfect example, if they don't build these buildings right, they're going to fall apart. They're going to fall on your head in 20 years. So what you're going to be doing is replacing them with money that you didn't want to spend to begin with. End of story. <laughs> oh my God. It's, I mean, that, that's a point of view, and, and I, I understand that. But it basically, it will be put to budget, the, to budget. It'll be the town meetings. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. But you understand what I'm saying. No, I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, you know, buildings like that usually are built to last, you know, and you want them to look nice and you want them to last because you don't want to keep, you know, spending, spending, spending. I, you want one, you lose your shirt. I you know? perfectly understand, but if, if we can build a building for, and I'll, I'll pick a number, um, four million or less, we it will not affect the tax rate and there will still be extra money in that capital stabilization account for other things if if we um spend the kind of money that you know building the first class building that you're talking about if we spend seven or eight million dollars it will use every penny of the money coming from cisco today and today and Cisco, a lot of the tax money we get is on personal property, mm -hmm. and that's that's gone in five years. So, it's what there, what there is there is a happy medium. I mean, when you see some of these high school, I coached girls' college soccer, and I played at a lot of, I read it on a lot of different stadiums. Okay, and when you see how they built some of these high school stadiums, okay, they look like Taj. Forget the stadiums, the schools. That's what it meant. They look like Taj Mahal's. So there's, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a halfway medium, you know? I mean, it's, sometimes it's ridiculous. I mean, you know, they, I don't know what they're looking for, Bill and Hollywood or what, you know? So, I mean, no, you, you're right. But the, the huge savings here, we believe, is by not having to pay prevailing wage for most of the construction. Yeah. Because that doubles the cost. And the, the only way that we can think of to, to do this, there's a, another possibility that we've talked about. And potentially, we could find somebody, um, a uh, landlord, that would be willing to build us a building and lease it to us. That's, an, that's another alternative, and we're, we're going to look at that, too. Pardon me? Yeah, but there's, there's a lot of developers that, that will do that. You know, if you look at the malls, I mean, all those malls, all malls are built by a developer. They lease the space, you know. So a couple of opportunities. So you haven't picked the site yet, right? Pardon me? You haven't picked the site? All right. Just make sure you're not in the wetland if you're going to put up the cells down in the basement. I know a lot of that land up where you're talking I first heard there. I've been in there a lot of times, and it's really, really good. Yeah, a, a lot of, and we talked we talked about that too. It, we may have to elevate everything, no matter where you build in town, because the water table is so high and and all that. I mean, that's that's a real uh, consideration. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's it's a big consideration over there. 
we, we would like, if, if we do do it this way, we would like to have at least part of the uh, basement be at ground level so you, so you can exit and enter, you know, with, so you know, build into a hill, if you will. But, and again, I mean, we're just, we've, we've had a couple of meetings, we're just getting started, but we're, we're going to make an effort at least to have something ready. I assume you talk repurposing this building before you came up with this. Yeah, and this that's the the study people for some reason spend a lot of time on rehabbing this and that that's just not gonna happen. I mean it's rehabbed as much as it needs to be. You know, it's uh, and we talked about doing something with the current fire station, but it would be much more expensive trying to rehab that than it would be starting from scratch. So I, for one, would not like to see it torn down. I think we could continue to use it for storage and things like that. I, I think that the new fire station could be smaller because you could store things like the brush breakers and things like that there. We wouldn't have to build new space uh, for a lot of things like that. And the highway department needs storage. So, I mean, I think, I think that building can remain useful and we can have a smaller footprint for anything new that we build. Also, if you have if you have two fire stations in town, even if we just were using that for storage, um, it puts you in a different ISO rating. Your basically your homeowners insurance drops for on on fire and so on and so forth. Yes. Fire Loans or I, I mean, what we're Some, sometimes well, just like we're like looking for greens. Like, like well, you know, when you build a highway, when you build a highway, the federal government does it because they supply yeah. seventy five percent of the money. It's a, it's, a, it's a mix, you know. That's why Reagan forced those tandem trailers down our throats. You know, I like Reagan, but I don't like that one. But he forced those tandem trailers down our throat, whether we wanted them or not, because they control the highways. But again, the police stations and, and fire stations. I'm wondering if at, at times there is money. There has been in the past. Yeah. We don't think there's any available now, but uh, yeah. Colleen had, has uh, some information on uh, North Brookfield where they did get a grant. So we're going we're we're looking for that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. No, we've been lucky. We've gotten a lot of grants over the last three or four years, and we, and we look for them. See, Mark, there, there was nothing bad there. No, no, I, and, and nothing bad at all. I just, uh, because I'm a butter to one of the land, one, one property that is still up as a possibility, I think the safest, surest thing to avoid a conflict of interest is to step down. Look, look, at, look at this. That's Pina. Yeah. That's Pina. And then this piece is uh, the one I'm talking about that I'm sure you bought. Where are we? Let's see. Uh, when it tucks it, Maine. Yep. Yeah. Towns, that town strip, which helps a little. Yep. You pick up a little part right there. Yep. Um, I, I'm speaking as a private citizen. I, that area is the exact right place for it, I think. And uh, this beautiful multi use of that property. Uh, the rest of the property for open space, uh, uh, access to the river, maybe even um, uh, 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 senior housing. It's a beautiful project. Okay. Uh, next. Let's see. Um, so the next two items, actually, you know, I gave you guys the agenda. There's an additional agenda item that was added. Um, uh, um, which is, um, uh, how did we label that? Um, um, well, which were some al alternatives on, uh, on, on public um, broadcasting. Cable alternatives. Cable alternatives, yeah. 
All right, so the next two items are cable alternatives um, and a request for town council time um, for enterprise uh, fund um, <coughs> town meeting articles. So um, they kind of go together. Uh, and Mr. Henry has passed something out. Maybe you want to tell us what you passed it, out. This, this is the, the uh, standard article that you use when uh, the second document there is the actual law that was passed that goes into effect January 15th. And this is the standard um, article that you would put in front of the town meeting. And it just, so it, it, it's not a, typically what, what we do with warrants and, and Dale's got to add that to his list and start. Usually Dale will shepherd this and he, he'll go through what we did last year and there's a lot of them that are the same. And then we'll, all of us will sit there and say, okay, we need one for this, we need one for that, whatever. Um, then at times there are complicated ones that we have town council write. Usually we take a shot at it and then they go to town council. So I'm, I'm just, I mean, this one I don't see as an extremely difficult one. To um, and, you know, the main reason I put that on is going to town council for that is uh, you, you may remember <laughs> we got into some complications and discussions about this. And, um, and, and I, what I want to make absolutely sure is um, that uh, the proposed Tri-Town uh, cable um, uh, if we go that way, we need the other towns to be absolutely comfortable that we've got this town meeting article correct. So um, this may be a good starting point to check with Alana, and I would seek permission to just fill her in on the situation from a little bit earlier and uh, offer. Well, I just I don't I don't know if you want to go piecemeal with articles or not, but I mean it doesn't it, it doesn't matter. The what's interesting in, in researching this today. Um, the town, and I want to say it was Pembroke, somebody actually went last summer to do this and got legislation. You know how, how we got the thing for the stabilization account? So prior to this new law, you could have done this, but it would require a legislature to do it. But. <clears throat> Just for my peace of mind, I, I guess I, I would like to ask this board for permission to go to town council, maybe with this as a template, as a starting point, to just fill in a on the issues. I just want to have this pinned down. I mean, there may be other, uh, other articles related to this, but um, to just spend a little time with her so she's fully up to speed on what we did in December and the um, uh, two agreements that we would um, consider signing based on the passage of this. So, um, um, so I'd like to make a motion that I go to Alana and, and just fill her in on this and get her um, um, blessing on this before we get into the busy time of, for town council and for us. So that's my motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Okay. So, um, so did you want to discuss uh, um, uh, more about uh, cable? Um, yeah. The um, <coughs> what what um, I intend to do is go to. Well, I, I don't know yet because I, I haven't done all the work yet, so I don't know if I have the right answers or not. But um, I think um, there's an alternative. So I'm going to go to town meeting with an alternative. But this, e either way, we're going to need this fund and, and you know, either way that we do it. E by doing this, um, it, what it doesn't eliminate is it has to be appropriated every year. Even though you've got this fund, it has to be appropriated every year. And I think that's why we definitely need to talk to Alana because I, you know, the um, um, the vast majority, if not every single town in Massachusetts, doesn't do it that way. Well, I've found quite a few that, that uh, do. And the vast majority do not. Yeah. And, and like I say, Pembroke actually went and got a 
I, I'm not sure that we would be able to uh, join the Tritown Agreement if it were going to be subject to annual um, town meeting vote. I, I, I don't think that works. So. Well, this, that's the only way you can, pretty much the only way you can, you can, I mean, you can agree to sign the contract, and the contract can't be more than three years, so you're in a situation where it would be three years instead of one, where you'd have to renew that, renew that agreement. But um, if you do it in the form of the legislation that you have there, which is essentially a revolving account like the several other revolving accounts we have, they're all renewed every year as well. Just that's the way the law reads. It has to be revoted every year. Well, I, I, I think this is what we're going to have to pursue and get pinned down well um, as we make our decision at town meeting. And you're, you're interested in an a internet alternative, mm -hmm. which I also think is interesting. Um, I really think it would be better to have both, both options. Um, the internet only, we, we have a lot of elderly people in town who do not have a computer. <coughs> We also have a lot of people that don't have cable. Well, that's true, but that's, that's more their choice, whereas with the older people, it's more a generational fact. You can, you can make um, DVDs available. There's ways of getting, getting around that. But it could be played here in the town hall and be played in the, in the library. Um, again, you need the internet, but the, uh, the town of Douglas that I sent you, the, stuff on it. They actually can get it on iTunes. So you're going to look into it more. Yep. At least a more. Okay. Onward goes <laughs> the uh, discussion about the future of uh, cable, com cable communication and broadcasting. Uh, the next item is uh, electronic communications policy and we did receive an email from the assessor wondering about a um, uh, privacy disclosure. Do um, you have any thoughts on that? Uh, some people use them, some people don't use them. I mean, it's not, I, I think if you're going to use the one, and I, I didn't recommend this to them because I didn't answer that email right away, but uh, I mean, it basically says it if you've received it. It's a standard. Um, um, privacy disclaimer that you would get private business uses that exact one, a lot of them. Um, I think you also have to include in it that this is a public document, you know, because it is a public document and so that, you know, that so that people understand when they're, um, you know, when they're in correspondence that they're actually not writing a, you know, a confidential message necessarily. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an open document. It, it can be retrieved at the request of anybody. That I would add to a that I would add to a privacy statement if if you choose to to uh, use one. Some people don't. I mean, some towns don't. Some communities don't use them at all, and some do. Any uh, sense amongst the board? My, my inclination is to. That this could get complicated and that we've done okay as is for the moment and I think I would want to stay that way. It would seem that we wouldn't need a town-wide one, but she came, she spoke to me today and it seems like they regularly use it. Um, I don't know that we'd want to prohibit them from using it if they feel it's necessary. No, it's perfect. I mean, the one they're using is perfect. Is perfectly good. Like I said, the only thing I would do is include that it, you know, that it is a public document, which kind of throws runs in the face of of you can't, you know, you can't, uh, you know, it's it's their disclaimer says that it's 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 confidential, um, but your emails are not in in government in town government, not in the state unfortunately, but in town municipal governments, your emails are not confidential. I mean, you don't have to share them around, but if someone wants them, you have to have them, you have to hand them over, so. And I mean, actually. The documents we get from the lawyers. Pardon me? We get documents from the lawyers. That's because, different. Okay. Not, that's different, but that's different. But I mean, in, in general, um, any email responding to a citizen or anything like that from one of the departments, that's public information. I didn't make the rule. 
like I said, if it was if I made the rule, it would apply to everybody on Beacon Hill as well as all of us. Right. So the public needs to be made aware that any response that they make via email is therefore a public document. Yeah, yeah, and right, and and I mean, you know, but if you're not the intended recipient, you know, delete the email and notify mm -hmm. the person yes. you got it from. That, that's all legitimate as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not inclined to take any action. Open to your. Uh, well, what is this? Is this this what, is what the lawyer says, and this is what um, Deb Stewart puts on. Yeah, she can't have that on there. Um, yeah, I disagree with it actually, and I, I, I think it's a bag of worms that we don't have to get into for the whole town by any means. Mm -hmm. She can't do that. <laughs> So then, they, do we need to tell her that, or do we need her to have a conversation with Dale? Or the um, there probably are some documents that they have that are confidential. Yeah, I mean anything that requires well, I mean personal information. In other words, the Board of Health sending something out and it has HIPAA information in it or anything like that, then that's a confidential document. Um, anything that deals with personnel are confidential. Yeah, well, the assessors get a lot of information on a, with a 61A application, financial information, Correct. stuff like that. That stuff is... And that, that. that would be an attachment which would be, in fact, confidential. Yes. So we don't actually know why she's using... She, she may not attach this to every document she sends out, just those particular documents. Yeah, but, we, we but for routine fine. communication, it's not technically confidential. You know, if, there, if, if there's somebody spilling out an application with financial information and social security numbers and all of the whatever, whatever it takes to, 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 do, to do a 61A or if there's any kind of, you know, legal interaction between the Board of Assessors. And that's actual income statements. And income statements. Well, those things are not, uh, those things are not, they're not, I mean, they're not generally available to the public. If someone were to challenge it and say, well, you know, I disagree with this particular 61A application for this person. Well, then you, but that still becomes a matter of the, the lawyers dealing with it, not it doesn't get spread around in the public. But the, but the one that they're using, uh, I tend to agree with John, and it, you just can't throw that blanket disclaimer that this is a confidential document on every email you send out because that's not true. Okay, and we don't know that she does. I, no, I don't. Just, just, just that when she uses one, this is what yeah. she uses. But when the email she sent, she said, this is the one we use, but she didn't say that she they use say, it on all, right. all, all the time. Exactly. And probably they don't. I'm sure that they just use it when they're dealing with stuff that's obviously sensitive. So can you check with us and just yeah. clarify that? Okay. Um, solar ongoing projects, I think we're in well, a low. Of um, I, I talked to Blue Wave, and they're, they're of course, tangled up in the same law that we are, and I guess it's not going to be quick. And maybe when you're talking to Alana on the other thing, maybe, because I thought it was going to be something that was quick because yeah. the, the appeal wasn't uh, filed on time, but this, I, he seemed to think the earliest would be six months and it could be two years. He, he blew away? The blew away people? Oh, yeah. thought they've, they've got their council, and the council's working with our town council. And uh, our town council hasn't told me it was a matter of days, but I just assumed that it was. It's a bad assumption, I guess. Okay. Um, so, by the way, at any point, if, if your solar bylaw committee wants to report or communicate, we're we're open to that. Okay. At your we're just working our way through it. Okay. Yeah. Right there. All right. Uh, let's see. Future Board of Selectmen schedule. Um, we, uh, I believe next Monday is a holiday. So our next few meetings will be January 26th and then February 2nd, 9th, and 23rd, I guess. With the possibility of another working meeting. Great. Okay, I think that brings us to anything else in terms of town coordinator reporting? Uh, 
I, I did mention it to you, but I'll mention it just to get it on the record. Uh, I did hear from um, uh, Melinda Ordway of the DOR Department of Revenue today, and she did say that uh, the study that they did on Clinton uh, financial, operational and financial, um, is in the final stage of review, and as uh, soon as she gets it, she'll be forwarding it to us, so I assume that's getting fairly close. And um, you all have a new email address. Uh, we're working on those we're bit by bit. I have uh, one for each of you, and I'll send you the email with the passwords and all of that kind of stuff. And also the Board of Assessors. Uh, and those are done. Uh, next will be the Board of Appeals. So that will be, we've got, uh, we've got the Conservation Commission um, and uh, Board of <coughs> Board of assessors. Um, I, I do see that FinCom has budget requests out to all departments and yes. boards, um, which you prepare. Um, but we'll discuss that along the way. You oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it's usually I just generally put the budget together. I don't anticipate. Well, the other thing that I would ask the board is if that under your budget items, which are essentially insurance and townhouse and uh, you know, and, and or whatever, would you like to? Is there any request that the board wants to put into their FY16 budget? You know, that's up to you. I, I, I'm not adding anything new to it. Maybe we'll make that as an agenda item for uh, okay. yeah. next or two weeks from now. Okay, yeah. Now, there's something that came from the finance committee saying they're looking for a level service level budget. service budget. Or what they've done is, is they made two pages, essentially, in the budget request. The first one is a level service um, budget and then um, additional requests on a separate page um, beyond um, level service. Perhaps they should have said level funded then, not level service. Because level service means level service, but it doesn't address whether the cost goes up or down. Yeah. Well, I think what they're asked for, if I, I just skimmed it today, uh, um, is the first page is a level service budget, and the second page would be additional services or additional requests. That's probably what they intended. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're up to correspondence. Okay. This is from T. Talage Company, who is going to have a presence at the Mass Municipal Association annual meeting. They are advocating um, tax title assignment sale auctions, which is supposedly a quick way for the towns to make money by selling their tax titles to somebody else. We, two or three years ago, we put a lot of time into looking at it, and it, the, you know, we have so little it doesn't make any sense, but mm -hmm. we have explored that. Um, this is from the Winnetuxic Children's Place, um, which is a daycare. Basically, this is not an animal complaint, but rather letting us know that there has been a situation with a neighbor's dog, and the animal officer from Halifax and Plimpton have both been called in. Um, the neighbors, are, they're hoping that the neighbors are taking care of it, keep the dog under control so it's not troubling the people and picking up their children and the children but it's not yet a formal complaint. That's for you, that's for you, that's for me. This is from the municipal, um, Massachusetts Municipal Association, about the board of directors annual meeting at the trade show in Boston on January 24th. Um, obviously they like people to attend. <coughs> this is the agenda for the business meeting. This is also about the annual business meeting, or requesting our voting member, which will be the chair, um, to attend. I'll be there. Actually, the governor, uh, the newly elected governor, will be presenting also. All right, so now I miss this one. Pardon? He's a Republican. He's a moderate Republican. You, you can't attend that, can you? <laughs> I am on local, well, I won't go into it. <laughs> I admire moderate, well, I admire radical moderation everywhere. 
<laughs> if that's not a too paradoxical a term. This is a notice of resignation from uh, Doug Hall, who's resigning from the Silver Lake School Committee um, for personal reasons. He, um, he's actually moving to Halifax and is no longer able to be on our board. Mm -hmm. So do we have to take action on that? Uh, we've got to, uh, I think we've, we've got to ask the, uh, what do we have? We have just two, right? Yeah, I think so. So Maureen, Maureen, you've got to ask her if she's got any recommendations. And I think it's just us. It's not the school committee and us, just the selectmen that appoint. It's the selectmen that appoint. Um, it's customary to ask that committee who they might oh, yeah. have any recommendations, but yeah. it's it's your it's your. Uh, I'll your I'll game. check with Maureen if she has any recommendations, and we'll go from there. I guess. Now, I don't I don't know if it's just until the next election or is it for the remainder of the term? Did he put on there how much how much longer his term is? He just got elected. What's that? I think he was just elected this last time. In that case, you would probably appoint until this election, and you would put just it just check that on because the ballot. some position, some positions are like that, and some are mm -hmm. you appoint for the mm -hmm. remainder of the term. Okay. These are copies of three letters from resource controls to people on Main Street regarding the private well sampling that resulted from the gasoline release, and uh, three of them had. Uh, le lead levels to below the drinking water standard. Are these the, one new, above. the new ones or the <laughs> existing ones? Because we've, we've had these for a while, I think. These letters were issued on December 19th. It doesn't say if it's the, the new wells that well, we can't, used. Well, it can't be because we just, when was the guy in? Yeah. It does. Huh? They were just out there a little week ago, a week and a half ago. Yeah, okay, this, so this has got to be the old ones. Yeah. So. Yeah, these are. The, this is from the old well. There was some question of whether they had took these samples before or after the filtering process. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Plus, they say that you know a lot of the um, houses have lead in their pipes, and they didn't let the water run long enough. And the one, the one house that is above the levels, they're going to retest in this quarter. This is the Halifax Plumpton Express. This is from the Mass Department of, well, it's from Barbara Gomez and Jim Mulcahy um, getting our reimbursement from the Mass Department of Transportation. So we need to sign those. And that's yours, so it's you have to sign. Mark and I have already signed. And this is the application for use of town property for the strawberry shortcake race, which I believe you need to sign. Okay. We voted on this uh, last meeting, didn't we? I believe we did. We certainly mentioned it. Okay. okay. That's it for correspondence. That's for correspondence. Okay. Uh, dates to remember, Board of Selectmen meetings we mentioned, and that brings us up to the uh, minutes for the January 5th meeting. Everybody have a chance to take a look at these. Um, the only real thing I had was that it was just an addition. I thought it was really interesting that the $45,000 that was raised came from over 300 donors. I just thought it'd be nice to put that in there. Great. Let me pass that on to Chris. Okay. All right. Uh, make a motion. We accept the minutes as amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We have uh, exhausted the agenda. Good. Okay. If not ourselves. <laughs> uh, all right. ZBA here tomorrow night. Is that yes, that is correct. For those that are interested, the ZBA here. Home. home on uh, Brook. Brook Street tomorrow night. 
Seven thirty. Is that what it is? You know, I, I don't is anyone it remember whether it's seven or seven thirty. Seven. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks everyone for coming. We'll be back in two weeks, ready to do it again. I wish everyone a uh, good uh, couple of hope. Uh, my name is Rick Olivia, and I did ask just for an informal meeting about a uh, parcel that I was interested in the town, purchasing to build a single family home. And I just had a question. I, I know we spoke with Tara. She said to come here at 7, <coughs> excuse me, 7 o'clock. And it is on the... Uh, Lot uh, seven, map seven, lot one nine, and apparently I guess uh, somebody had the seller tried to subdivide this property. I have no interest in subdividing it. Uh, I'm looking for a home site. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the question I had was, it looks like there were some preliminary um, designs as for a subdivision, but it contains 48 acres, and the majority of it is wetlands. There is some high ground that uh, I just, before I got involved with trying to purchase this property, would be curious to know if it is built a lot. Um, this is a, uh, a plan, I guess, that was submitted from the seller. And I don't know if it was approved. I know the uh, septic design was it was. So can approved. you orient us? Um, yes, this, this is, is Maple, Maple Street. Street. This is 58 here? Main Street here. Main uh, Street. Yeah, 58 is on the other side of Maple. Oh, that property. OK. And so this is uh, I guess what he had tried to do was uh, divide this into five lots, which you can see it's all wetland. Um, but this area here had been parked, uh, was approved by the uh, health department for a septic design and my concern was they were concentrating on this upper lot because he was trying to get approval I believe for future lots uh, he said I have no intention on doing something like that so I was you know proposing to put my home pretty much in the same location in a barn and that would be it but uh, I know it's informal I had come in uh, last week and spoke with Tara she said come here at 7 o'clock so I could at least uh, present it. So, so first of all, did we get your name? Rick Olivia. How do you spell that? O-L-I-V-I-E-R. Okay. And uh, this, it, it, this has a, a lot of history. Yes, I, that's why I'm here. <laughs> um, you know, I'm trying to try to get some type of a uh, closure to it. And I, I don't recall how it ended up, but there was a, a pile of um, concom hearings and yes. stuff like that. So you, you may, that may be a good starting point for you to find to go there and see how it, how it was resolved. Um, the abutter here um, fought this tooth and nail, and, and there was a lot of issues with wetlands and wetlands crossings yes. and. I did meet with you about her Sunday. I was yeah. walking the property with my wife, and um, she said that you know she had fought it, but we explained to her we were looking for a single residence. She said she wasn't going to fight, so I gave her my word it would only be a single residence. Um, so I, I, uh, I don't think there's there's anything really to do with us. It, it would be okay. I, I would I would start with the concom and. Um, I don't know if the zoning officer got involved in it. I've been to the zoning department, uh, yeah. uh, the health department, uh, and they said I should come here just to make sure. There, there is an approved septic system. The water health yes. doesn't approve. Yes, and it's still uh, good till 2017. So then the best bet is the concom. Okay. But I, I don't see where it comes into our. Yes, yeah, sounds like concom and zoning. Yeah, this, uh, no, this well, you, you went on there when we went through that. That was a nightmare. The, the files got I just right. want to simplify it into <laughs> one line. <laughs> so, I, yeah. you know, before I make the jump and, and uh, you know, put an offer on the property, I'd like to know at least if it were buildable. But um, where they had already approved of the septic, I would think that. Uh, it probably was signed up by the CONCOM. Yeah. I would yeah. think if the, if the okay. water health. Thing. All right. Well, I thank you so much for your time. Good luck. All right. Thank you. I really like the town, so we'll be here. <laughs>
Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Right. I make a motion that we adjourn. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, um, good couple of weeks to everyone. Thank you.